So this is the block of wood that I'm going to use to build Prevalox, which is the name I'm giving to this Pinewood Derby car build. Uh, throughout the video I've got uh, an idea in my head and uh, I'm going to be turning this block of wood into what you see here. So this is what I ended up with, uh, but unfortunately it's not going to turn out to be very fast. Getting into the, the build here, this is probably the world's worst bandsaw. Uh, I, I don't obviously don't know what I'm doing. I'm not a woodworker or anything like that, but uh, I, I'm sure it's probably all in the setup that the blade on that was just garbage. Um, so I'm just laying out the block here. I had a design in mind, but I'm, I'm marking it out. I'm sketching where I want to cut. Um, I measured the center line of the axles here, front and rear, and uh, kind of laying out where that's going to be. Um, going for kind of a rail design uh, long and skinny I'm pushing the wheelbase out to the very edge as far as I can get and still maintain the seven inch length um, just marking out where I'm gonna cut at and this is where I'm gonna mark I'm using one of those tungsten canopies so I'm, I'm laying that out I'm gonna go ahead and drill the hole for that so I know where it's gonna go as I lay it out a nice Harbor Freight drill press which works just fine for what I'm doing here. Um, obviously, 3 8 bit, it wouldn't fit, so I had a little something to fix that, which is this nice Dremel, and after that, it fit fine. Tracing around that, because I'm going to use the Dremel to to shape the body, and I, wanna, I don't want to go too deep. Um, marking out the center line of the rail, too, right here. And deciding what I'm gonna do too. Kind of uh, deciding as I go. It's getting pretty close. And then this is what I ended up with. Back to the wonderful bandsaw. Actually, it was a new blade on the bandsaw. I don't really know why it, it wasn't working very well, but it seemed like it took a lot of pressure to cut, and it was almost like I was trying to cut oak, but it was obviously pine. It was the standard pine block. Cutting, cutting the shape out, and I cut one side, and I went ahead and cut the other side too, and that'll, that'll get to be a problem to see as we go forward. Cutting that, and that's what I ended up with. And here I'm just marking where the axles are going to go uh, on the the struts, I guess we'll call it, for each wheel. And then I'm doubling that distance up because I want the I want the axle hole to be right in the middle. And then I'm going to whittle it down, whittle those struts down, shape them out so that it's uh, a, a little bit thinner than what it is right now. And I want the hole to be right in the middle of it. So I'm just marking where the hole for the axle is going to be and then where the top of the strut needs to be once I cut it down. So in order to fix the, the fact that I still need to cut some of that down, I taped the, the scrap back on so that I could run it through the bandsaw like this. So I'm putting an angle, a taper on the front and uh, I marked that out and I'm cutting it right now. And this is probably actually the, the hardest cut that the bandsaw had to make. It, it would barely go through this making a lot of noise it was really it, was, uh, it smelled pretty bad too <laughs> so It almost looks like it was hung up on the on the guard, but it wasn't. It, it, it was just above it. Then it broke through. Take the scrap off, and then you'll see what I ended up with. Mm. 
Look at that. Kind of to go for the traditional rail design, I'm, I'm drawing uh, a bunch of little holes. Um, like I said at the beginning, I'm not really a woodworker, so I don't have special tools to, to little little tiny saws or anything like that um, to drill or, or make holes in the side of the rail. So I just thought oh, I'll drill a whole bunch of little holes and I'll I'll just break them all out and then shape that the center section how I want. So I was going for the the three hole design, but. Uh, it, it took a little trial and error to, to get it around. I ended up finding a chisel somewhere later that I'll, I used to kind of finish it up. But the Dremel, the the it's not actually a real Dremel. It's like the the Menards brand version. I bought that extra pencil shaped uh, and a pencil tool that attaches to it. And I tried a, a few of the different uh, bits or or attachments that that run in it and. Uh, Probably the one that I like the most are these, uh, the drum sander pieces, and, uh, that, the, the, those ended up being probably the best for shaping the body, of course, but I wore the small one out pretty, pretty tough, and actually I'm throwing it back on the, 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 the drill press there just to get a few more holes in it, and this really, that's not how it's supposed to be used, obviously, um, I, I tore it only came the set only came with one little bit and I, I tore it up pretty quick so but it it really it chewed through the wood pretty well when it when it was in in one piece there's the chisel busting that out and actually I, I think that's when uh, the drum finally let loose um, you know I had I there was a few other pieces in there. There was a, a metal uh, file that I tried to use, and uh, that didn't really work at all. So I kind of gave up on the small one and just started shaping the outside. Um, and actually what happened during this too was my I was recording this on my phone, and it ended up dying. And so I, I had to plug it into the wall, which is a little bit was a little bit farther away, and... Obviously, as I'm working through here, I, the camera angle is not that great. But shaping with with the Dremel with that pencil style attachment was really easy. Um, really took shape well. That that drum really chewed through the wood well, and it was actually pretty fun to to shape it because pretty much anything you wanted to do was was. It, it, it didn't take a lot of work to get it shaved down to what you wanted. So I'm just shaping the front end, shaping the body, rounding the edges, trying to contour, make it aerodynamic. Uh, kind of a knife edge in the front or as much as much as really you could get. A lot of shaping on the sides. I, and I marked out where that canopy goes because uh, I don't want to, I didn't want to get up under it too much. Um, I think I ended up getting a, there a little bit, but I wanted to use that as a guide so that um, it, it kind of all contoured and flowed in together. Continue to shape that contour, test fit everything, make sure that the body lines are, you know, at this point it's kind of more about aesthetics than anything. Um, I've got some weights and stuff to add, but I want it to kind of have a, 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 nice, a nice appearance as well, so making sure everything's evened up and true and as best I can, at least.
probably the, the attachment that worked the best was was the diamond bit. I think that's for like ceramics or tile. But uh, when it came to this this intricate work on the inside, um, it took material off. It, it worked on the wood, but it, it it wasn't taking off a whole lot. So it, I didn't. I wasn't tempted to go too far or put too much pressure on uh it, I, I felt like i had a lot of control here um so it, it did a lot of the fine work pretty well and, and being the diamond tip i don't feel like it really wore out like like the uh the sanding drums did either i just i ended up using it all over the body because it it, it left a pretty nice fine finish I wasn't afraid to go too deep either. That's what I ended up with. I think it looked pretty good here at this point. It was super smooth and the canopy fit well. Um, so yeah, it it represented what I had in my head at least. So the flow, the you know the the small front end with with the lighting lightweight holes in the front, tapered into a spot where we can put the weights in the back. So here I'm gonna I'm drilling the axles. I have this axle jig, and the, the rear axles are straight across from each other. No no angle or anything. I I'm using the axle jig here. The front ones uh, they're they're not drilled exactly straight across. I got the right side that's that's in straight uh, on the same line that I marked out before, but the the left side I actually I marked where it was going to go, and then I raised it up a little bit to get that third wheel off the ground. And here I'm just test fitting the wheels, making sure everything looked alright. I'm not really pushing the nails all the way in, the axles all the way in. Just kind of getting an idea of where it sits. Mm, a little sanding too. Found some 220 grit sand sandpaper. That's what we ended up with. Not too bad for somebody that doesn't really uh, do a lot of woodworking. So now I'm. Uh, I have some tungsten weights that I'm putting in the rear end, so just right along the center line of the bottom, uh, I'm drilling a hole for, for one of the weights, one of the barrel weights. And I, I also, uh, where the canopy goes, I, I made that hole a little bit deeper so that it would fit uh, one of the barrel weights inside of it as well. As you see here, I'm dropping that weight in, and then the canopy will go on on top of that. And then the hole in the bottom will get a weight as well. And that brings it to 4.8 ounces. And a couple smaller weights too. And I should have left it right there and you'll uh, see why here in a little bit. But that one brought it right to five on this scale and that only goes to one decimal place and that would be an issue. So 
should have left it with the, just the, the one small weight. The next thing I did, I'm not too happy with, I went ahead and painted it. Um, it's Pontiac metallic blue paint from like a model kit. And uh, it went on like crap. Um, <laughs> it doesn't, the body doesn't look smooth at all anymore, the paint really. It, it kind of waved up, I just don't like it. Um, and then I went ahead and waited again after it painted and uh, <clears throat> ended up weighing the same, but uh, obviously since it only weighs out to that one decimal place, uh, at, at this point it was a little over five ounces. Uh, the rule, my rule stated it had to be five, so yeah, it still says five. Now, the, the two small weights, I went ahead and uh, drilled a couple holes there, uh, one underneath the canopy, one in the bottom, and uh, I just pressed those weights in uh, to the wood. Uh, so they were, they were stuck in there pretty well. Um, you see the one there next to that hole, and there's another one on the bottom right there. So uh, at this point, I was a little naive of how much it would weigh. Um, I kind of figured there might be a little bit of uh, drilling I'd need to do to get to, to get it, the weight down. Um, but here, I'm, the, the rules also stated that the weights had to be uh, epoxied in. They couldn't be free-floating um, or anything like that. Uh, the way I interpreted it is the, way, the weights had to be well-attached. So... I went ahead and uh, I'm epoxying the weights in the canopy. Uh, the canopy covers that small one that I pressed in here on top. So uh, I'm not really doing anything there. I'm just going to epoxy the canopy down. And that'll hold that in place. And I'm going to flip it over so the pressure's on the canopy. And I'm going to epoxy the bottom two on. The, the larger barrel weight there. And a little epoxy over the top of both of them. And this is kind of what it looks like with the weight direct of the whole car directly down on the canopy and then the front two wheels are on top of that block because it's the paint too it was it was still a little sticky at this point so this is what we ended up with So at this point, it pretty much represented what I had in my head, but it did not stay that way. So if you can remember, I added that extra weight, and it, sh it showed exactly five ounces on my scale, but uh, after the paint and everything, and uh, I had a little trouble. So when I went to weigh it, it showed 5.08 ounces. And uh, obviously having to be five, that, that was a problem. So I ended up having to take it out and drill a bunch of the wood. And you can see I cracked the frame there trying to drill on the bottom. I had to drill a ton out of, this, out of the inside of the back just to get it to make weight. And I eventually got it, but there was, I had to do a lot of work to it that I wasn't ready to do. But I made, I made it in time and uh, I was ready to race. So what happened? Well, 
the drilling the, of the wood, I, I believe I hit one of the axles with the drill bit, um, knocked the rear wheel alignment out of out of place. I was in, in a big rush. Uh, everybody was waiting on me to make weight before they started the race, so I had all the people standing around as I ran back and forth to the scale, back to the drill. And uh, I think I just knocked the rear wheel alignment out, and I didn't notice it. Um, I was surprised by how much it, it took to get off. And at the first race, I think it was okay. Um, but when it hit the end, I think it's when it, where it knocked the wheel out. You can't really see from that. But I went back afterwards, and I, I tried to fix it and um, back to the track, and I just ran it over and over and over again. And uh, the rear end, you still, it's kind of kicking out to the side right away, and I don't really know why. And, and I, I don't really know what to do to fix it. So, um, I actually, I, I ran uh, off camera uh, a, three, a 3165, and here I think it was a 3202 as my fastest, uh, just just at the end, running running the few tests after the race was over, um, yeah, 3205. So after the race, I brought it back home, and I just wanted to check it on the scale that I used to build it with to make sure there weren't any huge discrepancies. And it weighed out to 4.9 ounces, which uh, I think one of the weights that I'd pressed into the body, uh, if I left one of those out, it would have ended up being just fine. So this is uh, what the car looks like after the race. You could see where I drilled through, trying to, in a panic, reduce weight. Uh, drilled through the frame, cracked, cracked the body there. Uh, it's still pretty structurally sound, so I think a little bit of epoxy would fix that up. And I guess going forward, uh, plans for this, I'd like to, to work to get it competitive. Uh, it finished 10th out of 11, so obviously there's a lot of room for improvement. But uh, I think if I... Sand it, sand it down, fill in everything with epoxy or wood filler and, and be more strategic about where I place the weight and spend a ton of time uh, with the right axles and wheels, getting it to run straight, uh, doing a little bit more testing. I mean, I built this thing in a day, so uh, there's, there's obviously room for improvement there. So uh, if you'd like to see some of that happen, um, go ahead and like and subscribe and as I work through the process of getting this thing fixed up I'll post up some more videos of it so thanks for watching